Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at a 2015 Mercedes-Benz 300C. This vehicle has 60,000 miles on it and the engine has a misfire when it's first started cold. So let's go ahead and take a look at the engine. So in order to find a misfire on this engine, the first thing I want to do is I want to get into the crank sensor which we've done with channel 1. Then I need a sink, so I'm going to sink off of the coil, number one coil. If I have a sink and a crank sensor, we can locate the misfire on an engine and we can tell what cylinder or cylinders are misfiring. Let's go ahead and start this vehicle up. Now that we have this engine running, it's definitely misfiring and the engine is cold. We're getting the data from the crank position sensor and the number one ignition coil. From this data, we're going to be able to figure out what cylinder or cylinders are misfiring on this engine. Let's take a look at the data. This is what the data that all of us are so used to seeing. A crank sensor and an ignition waveform. Now from this data, it's going to be very hard to figure out what the misfire is. So what I want to do is I want to go to tools and I want to pick the firing order and I want to pick what my trigger is. Now there's an advanced algorithm that's in this tool that will analyze that crank position sensor and automatically find the cylinders for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now that the e-scope has processed the CKP data, it's indicating that cylinder one is our misfire. Let's take a look at this data. So right here, each one of these pink marks is where top dead center is. I can see right at top dead center the piston slowed down and then we fired the fuel and the crank accelerated. Here, again we slowed down as we fire the fuel it speeds up. So top dead center it fired the fuel it sped up and then the next cylinder came up on compression and we slowed the crankshaft down then this happens. What you see is in number one we just have a strict drop right through one over and over indicating that we have a, a misfire on number one. Let's take a look at number one cylinder to figure out what's causing our problem. So what we've done is we've taken channel three and channel four and we've just put the channel right next to the coil. This will give us some capacitive pickup. It will give us a real basic idea as if those coils are firing or not. It's a good trick. Let's go ahead and take a look at the data. We want to zoom in down here. Now that we've zoomed, we can see that this is cylinder one and this is cylinder two. And the coils are definitely firing. And we can see that we're having a little bit more of a problem firing cylinder one. Let's go ahead and take a look at that spark plug. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the number one coil and we're going to check the cylinder for compression. take a look at the plug. It's definitely dark and it hasn't been firing correctly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the compression of the cylinder. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take this vacuum hose off here so we can get a pressure transducer on the induction system. So we're going to put a vacuum transducer so we can read that intake pulse. Now that we've got the pressure transducer in the number one cylinder and the vacuum in the induction system, we want to get these pressure waveforms. So let's go ahead and start this engine up. Now that we've captured the data, we want to take a look at this data. The first thing that I want to point out is the exhaust pocket is lower than the intake pole. That's definitely the cylinder is leaking. 
The very next thing that I want to do is I want to look at these exhaust pockets for deformation. That means a cut from either side, flat bottoms, and mainly this front edge warping. That's going to tell me that I have a sealing issue from one of the valves. In this case, these pockets are all very well formed, and so I'm thinking this is a ring problem. When I get a really nice pocket that's way lower, and I don't have breakdown in the pocket itself, that's more of a ring issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the waveform. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at these intake poles up here. I can see where I made a pull, a pull, a pull, and I drop the vacuum during the induction pull. So you can see that right here is my induction pull. So I had a pull, I had a pull, and during this pull, I dropped vacuum, and then it came back up. And you see I have a steady rise of pulls, and then the pull drops during the intake. Now, if we have the intake valve open, the intake can't be the leak. This would either be the exhaust valve or the ring. Since my pockets are formed correctly and I've got a drop during the induction pull, this is a ring issue. Now that we've put the boroscope in the number one cylinder, we can see scarring on the cylinder wall. This engine has been overheated, and now the cylinder wall is scarred. That scarring allows the pressure to go by the rings, and basically that's what we're seeing with the in-cylinder pressure test. When you use the ATS tools, all of this type of diagnostics is just really simple and easy. It's what you really need to have at your shop.